We're going to do a walkthrough of the OpenMCT telemetry viewer app for OrcaSat. So this is a web app and the way it's set up right now is with dummy values for all of the OrcaSat telemetry points. And you can access it by going to the URL that's up on my screen here. And I'll also have a couple of links in the description for uh, where you need to go. So when you first uh, load the web page, you'll see a view probably something like this. You may be in my items, you may not be. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is just look at all the telemetry points that are available and talk about how to shift through time and view different ranges of telemetry. So open up Orcasat spacecraft and you can expand the folders and see each individual telemetry point. By default, it'll probably load up um, a time range similar to this, where it's uh, uh, ending sometime in August. And there are several ways to poke through and change the time range that you're looking at. The first one is really just to click and drag to kind of zoom in. The next thing that's worth showing is how to uh, synchronize the time conductor. So once you've got a time range selected, um, and we'll, we'll go through a few different other ways to do this um, in a moment. Um, once you have a time range selected, you can click this and it will uh, transfer that time onto any other plots. And uh, if, it, if necessary, it'll also rescale the Y axis and, and X as well to kind of fit the plot properly. So some other ways to uh, change the time range. One, you can go down here and go into fixed time span. So I think I got there automatically, but um, you can see we've got a, a calendar we can open up for the start and end time range. So the, the bounds are a little strange here. Let's change that. And we can go, let's say back to June that's before the simulated telemetry actually started. So we're sort of back to this sort of view. The other thing you can do is uh, highlight in this bar down at the bottom here to pick a different range. And finally, you can look at a few uh, historical time ranges that you've had from before. So let's, let's pick one. And if we synchronize the time conductor again, we'll get that rescale. And you can see if we go to any other telemetry point, it'll load it up with the same time range. And that's what the synchronize button does. So that's really how to view a single telemetry point at a time. Uh, the next thing that you can do with OpenMCT is create dashboards for yourself. So we'll go through that now. So the dashboards show up in the My Items folder by default, and this is stored in your browser storage. Um, you can export these to JSON to share them with other people, but what we're planning on doing is having a few dashboards available by default that always appear so that people don't need to create them. Um, but to create one from scratch, go up to the Create button, and first you need to add a layout and then you can add widgets and drag telemetry points onto them. So we'll start with a flexible layout. We'll just call it dashboard and make sure it's under my items and click OK. And uh, we'll just save this default two column view thing right here. And so now we have an empty dashboard. Now we can add plots and other types of widgets. So we can add, let's say, a stack plot. Click that. Make sure uh, your dashboard is highlighted and it'll be added uh, within it. Click OK. And now, once you have a, a plot that you're editing, you can expand the telemetry points and just drag them onto the plot. And every time, it'll add uh, either a new plot or subplot uh, for that telemetry point, or it'll add them all to the same graph depending on um, the type of 
plot widget you've got. So now we'll save that and finish editing. And if we go to the dashboard, you can see that our stack plot is now taking up uh, that one column that we put it in. We can go add other widgets now too. So we could add a telemetry table. We'll make sure that's in dashboard. And same story, you can add a drag telemetry points in. They'll just get added together. And uh, let's, let's save this. And now if we go to the dashboard, we have two, the two widgets we added. And I think we can now go edit and drag these around, resize stuff. So we'll save that. So now we've got kind of a little bit of a dashboard happening here. And uh, you can see with the tables, you can sort, you can look at the actual time range, OBC timestamp, all that kind of stuff. And uh, just showing the time conductor again, we'll, uh, we'll zoom into a certain time range on this subplot here. If we click the time conductor, everything updates and now all of the plots have the same time range. So that's a pretty useful um, way to navigate the historical telemetry. Now the last thing I'll show is an example where you can embed a web page. So one thing we're really thinking of doing is having kind of a timeline style view of events uh, that happen with OrcaSats. So those are things like sending commands, showing the response to the command, um, doing file downlinks, sort of a view like Houston gives you, and also a view that's kind of similar to the, the backtrace from the OrcaSat test reports that really show not the numeric telemetry, but the events that have been happening. So I'm gonna add a web page widget here and uh, I'll add that under my items directly and I've got the URL here uh, pasted in and click OK and this is just a demo right now uh, data isn't realistic at all and we obviously need other columns for things like the time um, but what we're thinking of doing is showing uh, a timeline style view of, of everything that's going on that can be a little bit interactive. For example, expanding a file to see the contents and things like that. So we think we'll also have this because it's uh, pretty useful to see that in addition to the uh, numeric telemetry.